Time ran out for the Equal Rights Amendment today. The 24-word statement pledging equality for women fell three states short of ratification. Women and men still do not have equal rights. There's no guarantee against discrimination. If you can pay a woman less than a man, then that's a huge savings to a company. We're not talking about a glass ceiling here. We're talking about a brick wall. Mothers are much less likely to be recommended for management positions. The laws that I thought were going to protect me didn't. Women are the means of reproduction. If we didn't have wombs, we would be fine. We thought that the birth control issue was settled. It is far from settled. Because our reproductive destiny is our economic destiny. It will affect our health outcomes and our economic outcomes for our, us and our children for the rest of our lives. How can it be our country has more homeless women and children than any other industrialized nation? Unless they are economically autonomous, all other aspects of empowerment will be defeated. He pulled a gun out and he held it to my throat and he told me that I was going to die that day. The police do not respond sometimes to violence against women in the same way that they respond to other crime. And we're being arrested at greater rates than we used to be arrested for. We have something like 35% of all the female prisoners in the world. A 13-year-old child was arrested for prostitution. Rape is the most common violent crime on American college campuses today. Victims are afraid to come forward. Perpetrators know that they can get away with it. I don't know what it's going to take for people. Those are our girls. This is our country. These are our daughters. This is why it's very important for us to be aware of who our lawmakers are and how much they're prioritizing women. Exciting. Let's get this party started. Thank you for coming. <laughs> so just to start off, what drove you to make a film about gender inequality? Well, I wanted to find out about it, and I started to look around for movies about it, and I couldn't find any. And I was shocked that there weren't any comprehensive analysis of the laws that presumably protect women and how that was having an effect on the ground. And there was nothing. And I just thought, gosh, I gotta, I gotta do something. Because the fact that we don't know that men and women don't have equal rights in the United States is an epic civil rights violation against 51% of the population. And I just couldn't take it. Honestly, I just couldn't tolerate the idea that that was in place and people didn't know it. 80% of us think that men and women do have equal rights under the Constitution, and I was one of them. So that's, that's why. Yeah, and the, as you said, the film is super comprehensive. You cover this really wide range of topics, including you know, economic discrimination, international women's rights, sexual assault, reproductive health care, pregnancy discrimination, both why did you want to focus on such a range of topics and also then how did you pick the ones that you ended up kind of honing in on? Very good question. Well, first of all, um, how I picked them, first of all, I tried to educate myself and I just thought, where are women being hurt? Where, where do I see problems with women? And so I'd investigate that. And when I finished the years and years of this, I had 26 different bins that had categories that I was looking at. Let's say immigrant women's rights, um, Native American women on the reservation. Um, there are just so many areas. But when I had to, and, and my original cut of this film was seven and a half hours long, guys. Because guess what? We're 161 million people. We're the majority of this population. We deserve at least 10 hours of programming. For Christ's sake. But anyway, I didn't get it. <laughs> so anyway, my mom and Kickstarter and Patricia all helped this movie come to be. This movie would not be here if I wasn't um, crazy or whatever I am. But I can't believe it. In a good it. way. I can't believe that we sit here and we accept that. And we accept that half the population are treated differently under the law than the other half. It's just a gaslighting. And we have the entire female population, the young women that I love 
and care so much about, and they think they're empowered, and they think they can have it all, and they can be president, but they don't have equal rights. And that's appalling, and they need to know that. And the fact that our government doesn't tell them that is, it should be illegal. We should launch a class action suit against this government for ripping us off to the tune of trillions and trillions of dollars a year and then making us feel bad because we have to go on food stamps. I'm done with it. And obviously a huge focus of the film is on the Equal Rights Amendment or because the ERA. It's the solution. Because, okay, it's so the solution. For, for anyone who might not exactly understand what it is, can you just give a little background what is the ERA at okay, its core? So our constitution was written in 1787, at which point women were chattel, which means they were property. In fact, the legal model for wives was what they used to create the legal model for slaves. Okay, so we were chattel. In 1920, we achieved one right, and that was the right to vote. We have achieved no other rights in the Constitution. Do not be misled. Do not be gaslit. This is not empowerment. This is collusion. This is a ripoff. This is a civil rights violation. We don't have the same rights in the law. So when the Supreme Court looks at cases where women are being discriminated against, it all falls away because there's nothing there that they can point to. So we have to stop blaming, although in the film I do take great exception with several of the Supreme Court justices. We have to stop putting the focus on that and put the focus on the Constitution because the Supreme Court is there to interpret the Constitution. And if it's not in there, what are they going to interpret? So we need women to be in the Constitution, people. That's it. It's simple. It's basic. It's plain. What it will do, now that's another story. And we don't know exactly, but we know that when slavery was abolished, it took a long time to get to this point. Well, maybe it's going to take a long time for women to crawl out of the hole that we're in. But without this basic fundamental law, the hole will only get deeper and darker, and the planet will only continue to spin off its axis, and we have got to solve this here in America because we are a global leader, and other countries look at us and they go, you are hypocrites. Why do you tell Afghanistan and, and Iran and Japan to put legal equality for women in their constitutions and you don't do it in your own? It's a disgrace. It's a national shame, and we should all be up in arms. It seems like having something like the ERA in the Constitution wouldn't be politically divisive. You would think. Right, you would think. Uh, and you go into the, in the film a little bit, you go into the history of when this became a partisan issue. How, how did that happen? Well, Ronald Reagan turned it into a partisan issue. Up until that time, actually the ERA was a Republican issue first, then it was a Democratic issue, back, back, back and forth. My point is this. Our civil and human rights cannot be a political football. They're not red, they're not blue, they're not any color. All people are created equally and must be treated equally under the law, period, end of story. I don't care what party you're in, I don't care who you represent. If you do not, as a legislator, stand up for all women right now, we are voting your ass out. These are desperate times, folks. We've got to take desperate measures. We've got to step it up. Stop being quiet, girls, and step it up. Say what you mean. Say what you need. Tell it like it is. And if somebody's harassing you or discriminating against you, you speak out right away and get it handled. Don't let it go by. We've got to stop that. So there's a lot, of, a lot of statistics that are being thrown at you when you watch this film. As someone who's seen it, after someone watches it, what should they do once they're armed with that information? The first thing you should do is go to equalmeansequal.com and it'll have a button that says, I've seen the movie and I want to take action. It'll give you a list of things to do that involve contacting your Congress people, writing certain letters, signing certain petitions, and speaking to other people. Because ultimately, for us to achieve this kind of a massive change in our society, we all have to take personal responsibility. I will tell three people today 
that women do not have equal rights, and it's wrong. We each have to take that stance, and I'm speaking to the men here today. We women have been a part of every civil rights struggle in this nation. We have helped everybody. Now you guys need to help us. We are asking you for, for your help. We are requesting politely your help. You have the power. You have the capital. We need your help to save the planet. We need your help to bring balance to this society and to the world. And there are so many, many men of goodwill that agree that men and women have equal talents to offer. I implore you to stand up for the Equal Rights Amendment. It's your mother, it's your daughter, it's your wife, it's your lover. It's all of us. We're a human species. We're not us and them. We're all together, and we have to make this work together. Children being raised in our society are not just being raised by mothers. They're not just being created by mothers. They can't just be paid for by mothers. Our corporations need to, need to understand that if they want workers in their offices, they need to provide for women that are creating the next set of workers, not just kick them out and say, oh, you're pregnant. Oh, well, get out of work for a year. How are they supposed to pay for that? Who's paying for this child care? Why is that our responsibility and only ours when boys are born, not just girls? It's not okay. Everybody's just sitting around like it's okay. Well, it's not. Hey, it's not okay. So I'd assume that you see your film as sort of a call to action for all of us. Listen, I'm an actress. I've been an actress since I was seven years old. I didn't come into this to make a movie about this huge thing that took eight years of my life where I didn't get paid. I did this because it has to be done now, guys. It has to be done now. This isn't a movie. This is a movement. This is a tool. I want people to use it. I want them to educate other people with it and themselves with it. And they want them to take some action and stop being complacent. And stop looking at things like, uh, I don't know, like clothing or twerking or tindering or whatever the hell is going on out there. That's beside the point because empowerment is subjective. Power is objective. Let's take an objective look at the society and see we are not in power. There is no area in American society where women participate at a level of 30%. Come on. I'm sorry. No, it's good. I appreciate the passion, right? Like, these are really, really, really important issues. Yeah. And a big takeaway for me watching the movie was that we really need change at the federal level, not in a more piecemeal way at the state level. Why is it so important that we get something on the books at the federal level? So when the ERA failed in 1982, there were millions and millions of women that had been marching and working on this for decades. And what they did was they said, okay, they're not going to put it in the Constitution. We're going to find workarounds. And what we are sitting in now is a series of jerry-rigged workarounds with loopholes the size of the Lincoln Tunnel that anybody with a law degree can get through and discriminate. So states, laws in states can be changed. They can be changed depending on who comes in. They're statutes, so they're voted on depending on the flavor of the month, the political flavor of the month. Women's civil and human rights cannot be at the mercy of political cycles any longer. We are not a football, we are a majority of this country, and we deserve to be treated equally under the law. And that's why we need it in the Constitution, which supersedes all state laws, right? So we have, right now we have 22 equal rights amendments operating in various states in the nation. And what we've seen is by doing studies of cases where women take sex discrimination cases to a state with no ERA and a state with ERA, there is a vast outcome difference. So in a state without ERA, a woman who brings a sex discrimination case has a 50-50 shot at winning her case. In a case with ERA, she wins at 80% of the time. This is a vast difference. What the ERA does is it compels our government to use a higher level of scrutiny. Right now, in the area of sex discrimination, we are using what's called intermediate scrutiny, which was created 
remarkably, unusually, just for us. And let me tell you, it doesn't work, okay? We need strict scrutiny, like is used in race cases, like is used in national origin cases, like is used in religious cases. And when we, when we get the ERA, that is what they will be compelled to do. So what will, the difference will be that if you bring a sex discrimination case, let's say against Walmart, right now Walmart can drag that thing through the courts and has for over a decade because they simply have to prove they did not intend to discriminate. We are the ones that have to prove that they did. Tell me how on earth. Me, working at Walmart for, I don't know, 10 bucks an hour, can fight the largest private employer in the United States of America and compel them to pay me properly. We can't do it. So this is why we need the Equal Rights Amendment. So the Equal Rights Amendment would say, wait a minute, it doesn't make any sense that at Walmart, one-third of the people, one-third of the managers are women, but two-thirds of the minimum wage workers are women. Hmm, that seems kind of funny. Well, if we had ERA, they'd be looking at stuff like that. And I'm not saying it's a panacea that would immediately, oh, magic, boom, and it's all fixed. But it, you got to start somewhere. It would give women um, an easier way to hold these larger institutions accountable. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, and how do you think the message of your film kind of plays into our current political climate, you know, given the fact that we could have our first Woman president, we're seeing a lot of sexism as a huge theme throughout this election cycle in a really, really stark way. Um, what do you hope people kind of take away from seeing equal means equal in the context of where we are right now politically? My fear always about bringing it down to sp the specifics of the political and the now is that I've been making this movie for eight years and it's chasing a running train, right? Because every day there's something else that happens. Every day there's a new horror, there's a new insult, there's a new this, there's a new that. I would like to maintain a very sort of Switzerland-like position in that I don't actually think it's particularly relevant. Yikes, I think it's a show. I don't buy it. I think it's all a show up there. We got to do the work here, down here, where we live, where we get those $8 paychecks. And we got to get enough of us talking about it, like Occupy, like Black Lives Matter. This is the same movement. We are all part of the same movement to demand that America live up to its principles and provide Americans with a living wage and a living, a, a nice life, not a life like we're all living today. So I, I think they're all connected, and I'd hate to just have, parse it out and go, oh, Hillary, oh, Trump, oh, whatever. No, this is 200 years. This is 200 million people we're talking about. I could give a rat's ass who's sitting in that house. I want action now. I want to see kids getting fed. I don't like that one in five American children doesn't have enough food to eat. It's really, really upsetting. We're the richest country in the world. It's not okay. Okay, that's it. It's not. And so at the grassroots level, you know, we're hearing all these things. We're having this discussion right now. When all of these people leave this room, like, what can we do in the immediate to start addressing this stuff? Well, obviously, I would love you to watch my film, Equal Means Equal. It's available on iTunes starting September 6th and on demand. I would like you to then host a house party and invite some friends over. And if you go to Equal Means Equal and say, I'm going to do a house party, I'll send you a kit. And then you can do all the things that I'm saying in the kit with your friends. And then they can maybe have a house party. And you can rent the movie, I think, for $4.99. So you know, let's just get the word out there. Get these action items handled. There's a big list of them that you can do. And tell three more people. Because when we have this big of an uh, of an information vacuum or an absence of the proper information, it's not going to get handled unless all of us just step it up and be like, you know what? <laughs> we don't have equal rights. And you know what? People are going to tell you you're wrong. They're going to tell you you're crazy. They're going to tell you we've had these for decades, blah, 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 blah. And then you're going to point to it and say, no, we, we don't. We don't. 
And that, that will be very, very, very powerful. And I guarantee you we'll get this done. If we all do that, we will get this done. Because this is just an absence of knowledge. This isn't that people believe this. I don't think people believe that men are better than women or should have more rights than women. It's an oversight. The gay movement leapfrogged over us. Now we got to leapfrog back, get our shit handled. It's OK. Sorry. <laughs> so on that note, I actually think it's a perfect time for us to throw our weight to the audience and see if they have any questions for you. Hi, um, how did you go about selecting who you wanted to interview and what was kind of one of the most rewarding interviews conducted or anything that really stood out to you? How we conducted the interviews was we would look at a certain area, let's say it was pregnancy discrimination, and we would start to research who were the experts in that area, who were, were cases going on in that area, and we would just start calling them and asking for interviews and so on. And it, believe me, it was tedious. It was long. It was why this movie has never been made, because nobody wants to make a movie like this. It's, it's arduous. Um, but I tell you, what I learned from these women, things, my heart was broken so many times, it was like Humpty Dumpty. I spoke to women. Our DP's mother was murdered in a domestic violence incident on the night of our DP's wedding. She had to run out of the room while shooting. Every other woman in the room had been raped or beaten. I had eight social workers in Ann Arbor that had to handle the people that had PTSD after watching this movie. We had a stack of questions from the audience we had to give to the police department. This is what we're dealing with. One out of two women in all probability has suffered either sexual assault or domestic violence. These are the statistics. This is the hidden elephant in the room. We've got to start talking about it. Hey, this is super important. Um, how do we change the standard of scrutiny that's applied to these cases? Well, the first and most important way to change the standard of scrutiny would be to ratify the Equal Rights Amendment. It would then place that burden on the, the, the person being um, sued to prove that they did not discriminate instead of right now, which the burden is on us to prove they not only did discriminate, but they intended to on top of it. How on earth we would know what the hell they're intending is beyond me. But that's, that's where intermediate scrutiny really fails us. And we must have strict scrutiny, and the ERA is the way to strict scrutiny. Sure. Hi. Hi. I have a question. How do you teach men and women about equal rights and feminism? Because it seems like it's always like a negative attachment to it when you talk about equal rights and feminism. So how do you teach people who really don't understand it what it really means? That's a great question. I took a class at Santa Monica Community College, and I gave them what I called ERA University. The first uh, question I asked to the men was, are you a feminist? And they all said no. And they were like, not only no, but whoa, you know, don't try and call me that. By the end of the class, every single one of them was a feminist, a proud feminist, because they understood the meaning, which is simply human rights for all people. A feminist is somebody that believes that human and civil rights should apply to every person, not just men. And that's all it means. And we have to, I guess what we have to do is say to men that are nervous about this is we're not trying to take from you. We're simply trying to join you. And we love you. And we want to be a part of this society. And we think we can help. Because I really believe that women can help a lot of these major, major problems that we're facing that aren't really going anywhere. We saw it when the senators, when they were having that debt ceiling problem, and the men were just, hmm, my stick's bigger than your stick, and I'm not going to, and the women just said, oh, forget it, and they went and had a drink at the bar or something, and they came out and it was fixed. And the Republicans and the Democrats, I mean, that's how we are. We will fix it. We fix it. Let us fix it. Okay, I think we have time for one more question. Hello. So you were speaking earlier um, about how when women get abused, they should speak out so the problem can be handled and settled immediately. So I wanted you to say some, because you're so passionate, I wanted you to say some words to women who have been abused, who feel that they can't speak out. Because in media, you know, when women do speak out, they, their accusers get like a month in jail and nothing happens to them. So, so, so upsetting. 
and so true. And I'm scared to tell women that are being beaten to do anything to put their lives in danger. But I would ask them to write to me. I'll see what I can do. I would ask them to try and find a safe person to speak to about this. I know. OK, there's a program called SART, Sexual, Response, a Sexual Assault Response Team. It's in all the hospitals in New York. And I know the ladies that work there. They're incredible. If you manage to get yourself to one of those places, they will help you. They will make sure that, that something is done. As far as the domestic abuser getting out of prison so quickly, again, ERA, ERA, ERA. Right now, women are serving 26 years for killing a man that beat them and beat their children and almost killed them. And men get off every day. So ERA, 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 now. So I think this has given us a lot to think about. Um, and yeah, everyone should see equal means equal. Uh, thank you so much for joining us here at Bell. Thank you. <laughs>